All right, time is now 2.40 on this edition of Chicago Live. Now we're heading, and we're going to be speaking with Dr. Michelle Nichols from the Adler Planetarium. We've just learned uh, there's a new milestone with now 6,000 confirmed exoplanets. We want to know what does this mean for the scientific community and the general public as a whole. Uh, Dr. Nichols, uh, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. So I do want to start with, for people at home who aren't familiar, what exactly is a exoplanet and why is this 6,000 number so significant? So an exoplanet is a planet that orbits another star. So we have our own solar system with one star and a group of planets, numbers a little bit controversial, eight, nine, whoever you ask, they might have a different answer, of uh, planets that go around it. There are other stars with planets that go around them that create their own that have their own systems and so um but we have that general term for those planets as exoplanet now the first planet that was found around uh, a star similar to our sun was found almost exactly 30 years ago so just slightly over 30 years ago and since that time just over 6,000 planets have been found orbiting other stars. And several of those systems have more than one planet. Um, but it basically, we're finding that that in, in just a short few decades, we've been able to find so many. And then we know that planets are obviously very plentiful in our Milky Way galaxy. What would you say is behind that acceleration, as you just mentioned, just in the last couple of decades or so, uh, this exploration has kind of exploded. Uh, is it kind of advances in technology? Is it more people paying attention to this? Uh, what are you seeing from your view? All the above. So advances in technology, at first the number of discoveries was relatively a trickle. It was uh, individual studies of individual stars or, or um, uh, maybe a few from a, a survey effort of some sort. And then we had the Kepler spacecraft, the Kepler telescope, which orbited and, and stared at a spot in the sky for over four years and gathered information on about 150,000 stars all at the same time and we found several thousand planets just from that one effort and now we've got a follow-on telescope called TESS um, and that that particular telescope is finding even more and so as our technology gets better to be able to find these faint signals of, of different ways of being able to find these things as we just are staring at more stars in the sky um, we've got the opportunity to find so many more of these of these uh, planets so it's pretty exciting. Uh, speaking of finding more, NASA has mentioned potentially an additional 8,000 potential, potential candidate planets that are currently awaiting confirmation. What exactly is that process like of moving from a planet candidate to now we officially have a new planet? So most of the time with the efforts that find these planets in the first place, they'll stare at a star for a while, see if they can find a planet around it, there's different ways of, of doing that, but maybe they find evidence of a planet. Well, that particular survey effort might have to move on to another part of the sky or the telescope has to be used for something else. And so the follow on to make sure that it wasn't something else that caused that signal to maybe kind of look like it might be a planet, um, they want to confirm that and so that's being done with other telescopes usually on the ground um, and so we've got telescopes in space that might find them telescopes on the ground then do the grunt work of finding more and more of these and confirming them um, that, that that they really are out there so that that takes a longer period of time um, and so that it's why we've got 6,000, actually I checked this morning, 6,009 conformed, uh, confirmed as of this morning with another 8,000 plus that we still have to do that follow on work to really make sure it wasn't something else that caused that signal to kind of look like it could be a planet. Those are some big numbers. As journalists like to say, I didn't major in math. Uh, how do scientists decide which of these planets to actually follow up on and do more research when there's so many to oh, choose from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, honestly, a lot of it has to do with the brightness of the planet. How close is it? Um, and the closer it is, 
the more the better resolution that we have to point a telescope like say the Webb Space Telescope and take the very very precious time that is available limited time that we can devote that telescope to maybe staring at that planet and figuring out hey does it have an atmosphere um, if it does what is that atmosphere made of um, what are the conditions like on this planet what's the temperature uh, is it a big one a small one there's a lot of details that we can figure out um, um, and so, but it takes some of these really seriously important big telescopes to take a little bit of time that they've got to stare at one of these for a while and do a lot of those follow-on studies to really hone in on on a bunch of these. But a lot of times it has to do with, is it the closer it is, the more we can tend to learn about it because it's just physically easier to do that. Um, if stuff's pretty far away, it's a lot harder to do that. So a lot of times distance uh, plays a big part in that. Uh, when you're speaking to some of your colleagues in the scientific community, is there a general consensus on maybe just how closer we are to finding out that there is life out there on another planet besides Earth? There are so many astronomers out there. They want to know that life is there. They want to be the ones to go, yes, it's here. The hardest thing we will ever do is have any sort of confirmation because we can't go to these planets. We can't see them up close. We have to rely. We have to basically rule out everything else as a possibility before we could say yes it's whatever signal we're getting it's due to life that will be the absolute hardest thing we could ever do because someone will go but what if it's this or but what if it's this other idea what if it's all these other things that have nothing to do with life we have to rule them all out to be able to then confidently say for this thing we can't go to um that it's it's life on another world i would say we have a better chance of confirming if life existed previously in our own solar system um before we might maybe confirm something someplace else just again due to distance and and accessibility of this stuff um to to us here on earth well speaking of that distance uh are there any new missions or technologies that are maybe on the horizon that will kind of cut down that lag time that you were speaking of and Maybe we're not going to get there in the next 10 years, but maybe 25, 30 years down yeah. the line. Yep. So there's a, a new telescope that will hopefully be launched in the next couple years or so called the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. And it will uh, look at wide pieces of sky. And so that means it'll see a lot of stars all at the same time. And so that will be a way that we can use to start to find even more of these possibilities for these planets uh and and start to find even more of them that might be earth sized because a lot of them aren't um maybe earth temperature because a lot of them aren't um and start to find out more about these things and then there's another telescope that if it gets funded uh could launch by 2041 maybe <laughs> maybe maybe later um to be able to really start to to study these things directly um and and learn more about them so we're talking several decades worth of the of the potential of these but the nancy grace roman telescope is coming and this this other one could be another you know 15 20 years or so before that one happens 15 years will be here before we know it for sure uh exactly. if maybe somebody is a parent and wa watching this at home and talking to their little ones about this is there anything at the Adler Planetarium currently happening that can maybe explain this process to kids on uh, as we look further into, I guess, space exploration? So we have our own observatory that's open uh, on every clear Wednesday evening. Basically, the rule is if the door is open, please come in. And we have our big telescope out there. And we absolutely love questions about if folks want to just come in, look through our telescope. We can start to look at planets. Or we can look at planets in our own solar system. Uh, Saturn will be visible uh, this, this fall. And we then can have a great conversation if folks want to ask us questions please definitely talk to us about about all that we've also got our other worlds exhibit which uh opened a little while back but other worlds is all about planets in our own solar system worlds in our own solar system and worlds elsewhere um so talk to us directly look through our scope 
check out Other Worlds, um, the exhibit, and we've got a, a wide variety of ways for you to interact with us and learn more about this. <laughs>